little bit about Moses. Have, has anyone ever seen the Ten Commandments? That Moses. The one who parted the sea. You remember? Parted the sea. That's, that's, that's the Moses we're talking about. And it's interesting to me to realize that not only did he lead the people in the wilderness for 40 years, he only lived 120 years. But the word of God says that when he lived those 120 years, at the end of the 120 years, he could still see clearly. Why it referenced that, I'm not sure. I started to think about it and I started to say, so that people would know he could still lead. He could still do something that he didn't have to be carried around or walked around. He could still see. And the other thing it says is that not only could he see, but he was as strong as ever. Why would it say that? Because it's one thing to be strong and not be able to lead yourself, but he could do both of those things. And God said, you've done what you needed to do. And one of the greatest things about Moses was that he was the only prophet. He was the, he, there has, it says, there has never been another prophet in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. See, but in order to get through all those things that he did, he had to come to a point, a point where he would understand why he would, he would go through certain circumstances, why he had to reach out and take a closer look. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. Today's message is entitled, Take a Closer Look. Take a Closer Look. See, because we have to have that desire to want to know. Have you ever thought about this? Have you ever thought about this? Have you ever taken a closer look to find out why you're here and what you're here to do? Literally. I think every one of us at some point, maybe even in our moments of uh, most discouraging moments, we've come to a point where we decide, God, what is this? Why, why am I even here? Why am I even going through this? Why do, what is all this about? Does anyone else agree with that? Have you been at that point? Sometimes it's a point of despair. Sometimes it's just a point of wanting to know or reflection about where has my life been? Where is my life now? And where is it going? That's why we had to take a closer look. See, it's interesting to find out that Moses, he started out, everything that he did, in other words, where all this started, where he led the people, you know, the Israelites out of, out of Egypt, where he opened the Red Sea, where he received the Ten Commandments, where everything that he did, it took an initial step, an initial act from him. And in Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 4, it opens up the whole story about how Moses got to where he was or what he's known for. It says in verse 1, One day Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led the flock far into the wilderness and came to Sinai, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the middle of the bush. Moses st stared in amazement. Though the bush was engulfed in flames, it didn't burn up. This is amazing, Moses said to himself. Why isn't the bur bush burning up? I must go see it. When the Lord saw Moses coming to take a closer look, God called to him from the middle of the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses replied, here I am. A little further down in verse 10, he gets his orders or his, his purpose has been, is revealed from God. See, one of the things we have, to, we have to remember is that from the point that he received his orders, Moses, he, had a, he gave a lot of excuses. Do you remember, does anyone remember ever reading about those excuses? You know, but who am I, right? 
Um, but who do I say sent me? Because this is the, he's got to go tell Pharaoh this, and he's also got to present it to the Israelites and, and, and maybe convince them. And in his mind, he's thinking, I got to convince these people. These millions got to follow me. How are they going to follow me? One of the last things he tells, he tells God, and this is a conversation with God. Remember, this is one of the only prophets, the only prophet that had that face-to-face -face relationship with God. And he has to tell him, uh, but you know, I can't even speak. I can't even speak. And he says, well, don't worry about that. I got you covered on that. I got someone who will, all, he'll, all you'll have to do is make sure that you're leading. And this person will help explain it. Because a lot of times that's where we come to. We come to a, a point of excuses instead of a, a, a moment of realizing that we are all called to do what he's called us to do. Every one of us, the moment we accept Jesus Christ, we are called to do what he's called us to do. See, a calling is this. A calling is the customized life purpose or plan which God has designed for you to accomplish in order to bring the greatest glory and maximum expansion to his kingdom. At the end of the day, everything we do is to bring glory to God. He created us. Why shouldn't he reserve the best? The devil didn't create us. Science didn't create us. Man didn't create us. So they don't deserve the best. The very best is saved for your creator. That's the importance of understanding our calling. See, I can give you an example. This microphone, if I ask it, what is it here for? What is it to do? If I ask this microphone that, first of all, it's not gonna respond. Are you with me on that? It's not going to respond. Because the microphone didn't make itself. Someone created the microphone. The one who will answer those questions is the one who created this microphone. Do you get that? Someone's going to be there to answer the questions, but it's the creator of the microphone, not the microphone. And many times we miss our calling misunderstanding our calling because we're trying to tell ourselves what we're called to do. And we leave out the Creator. We proclaim to love the Creator. We proclaim to surrender to His Son, Jesus Christ. But we leave out the Creator when we're trying to find out, God, what purpose do I serve here on earth? See, every, every calling requires a caller. Who is the caller? God. And if we live our lives outside of our calling, we're simply existing with no defined purpose. We're simply existing with no defined purpose. Do you, do you, are, are you getting where I'm going with this? We need the Creator. We need the one who called us who called us his own, who called us with purpose, who knew us before we even came onto the, into this earth, before we were knit in our mother's womb, he knew us. We need our creator. So what do we do when he's calling? What happens when he's calling? Because Moses had a calling, and we're going to break down what I just read to you in those first four verses. That when he's calling, God allows a circumstance to call our attention. That's the first thing. God allows a circumstance to call our attention. What does that mean? He needs to get our attention. So he lets us go through certain circumstances. There was a circumstance that was explained up there. There was a circumstance that they had to go through. But God called them. One responded one way, the other one responded the other. But there was a circumstance that happened. See, in verse 2 that I just read to you in Exodus, 
chapter 3, it says, there was an angel that appeared to, to him, speaking about Moses, in a blazing fire in the middle of the bush. Moses stared in amazement. Though the bush was engulfed, it didn't burn up. The thing is, it says, in the middle of the bush. See, in the middle of your circumstance, God is going to speak to you, is trying to tell you something, is trying to show you something. God used an unusual experience to call Moses into his purpose. What was his purpose? Initially, lead, get these people out of here. They're being abused. They're being enslaved for no reason. They're, they're, they're being taken advantage of. And these are my people, God said. And I'm asking you to do it. I'm asking you to do it. He was telling, he was telling Moses that. So he used this unusual experience to call it to his attention. See, your most devastating moment becomes your most impacting accomplishment. Whatever the situation is that you go through, your most devastating moment can become the most impacting, the, most, the, the, the one that you can use to lead another life to know the love of Jesus Christ. Because that's part of our calling. Because I can't just come up here, repent before, before God, accept his son Jesus Christ into my heart and say, well, that's all I have. I don't have any other accountability. There's no such thing. Every one of us is called. Every one of us is called to do something. He has a specific purpose for us. See, Romans, if you, you've heard this verse many times. Romans 8, 28. For all things work together for good. You remember that? All things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. See, being called and purpose work together. They work together. When you were called, you had you had a defined purpose. You have a defined purpose here this morning. Don't let the enemy ever tell you that you, you have nothing to offer. You have no, nothing greater than just sitting in a, in a, in a row here at church or, uh, or, or a cubicle there at work. You have greater purpose than that. That is part of your life, but it's not your purpose. That's how good God is. And so when he shows us that, again, he allows that circumstance to call our attention to it. He also, God also anticipates our initiative to seek his understanding. He anticipates our initiative to seek his understanding. Let me explain that. In verse 3, this is amazing, Moses said to himself. Why isn't the bush burning up? I must go see it. See, it didn't only strike him that this was amazing, that, wow, this bush isn't burning up. But he says at the end, I need to take the initiative to go find out what this bush is all about. Is it making sense a little bit? Moses looked at this unusual moment and decided to go find out more about it. That's exactly why, that's exactly why he said what he said even to the point to where he was ready to go find out. See, it's our responsibility to find out what God wants to show us and do through us in every situation. You can, you can sit here and, 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 and every one of us can mope about how bad life has treated us, how, how things have gotten us down, how people have come and gone. And... But you saw in that video, there was a moment where in the middle of her circumstance, God showed up and said, I have something more for you. I have something more for both of you, but not everyone is willing to accept that call. That video was so impacting. I don't know if you need to see it again, and it'll probably be on our Facebook page at some point. But I'm just saying, you got to watch it until God speaks to you. Because the truth is that what, what was happening there is exactly where, where, where Moses was getting to. You know, he had to get to that point. 
He had to get to that point to understand that his, he, he was, it was up to him in order to find out and understand what God was trying to show him. What was it? Verse 4 tells you, when the Lord saw Moses coming to take a closer look, God called to him in the middle of the bush, Moses, Moses, here I am, Moses replied. I told you that in the middle of the circumstance or the situation, God is speaking to you. But the first part of it is where, is where it enlightens you to understand how God works. When the Lord saw Moses coming to take a closer look. When he saw Moses coming to take a closer look. In other words, it's us that has to be willing. When he's calling, God reveals his plans when we willingly draw near. That's the third thing. God reveals his plans when we willingly draw near. Moses willingly drew near. Selina willingly drew near. Maybe the other party in this didn't want to draw near, but she was willing to draw near. And that's when God said, ah, I got your attention, now you got mine. Does that make sense? In other words, I told you, God uses these circumstances to call our attention. But after he calls our attention, we can do one or two things. We can turn away or we can start moving towards it. What is it that you're telling me, God? What is it that you want from me, God? Because every one of us has been through a situation that has put us in that position. Whether it was a job, whether it was finances, whether it was a, a, a relationship, whatever it was, we've been placed in that situation at some point. And what did we do? How did we react? See, God saw Moses' willingness to move closer and respond to the plans he had for him. That's exactly what he did. So we, when we're willing to move, listen, and respond, God's ready to speak, provide, and lead us into our purpose. Catch that. When we're willing to move, listen, and respond, God's ready to speak, provide, and lead us into our purpose. Are you willing to move towards that purpose? Are you willing to do something just as we saw on this video, something had to be done. What was happening was not working. When God started being left out of the picture, all of a sudden, things started to get a little rocky, a little hard. You leave God out of the picture, and that's exactly what's going to happen. Because you remember what I mentioned earlier, we did not create ourselves nor did any man or any, any other thing or source make. God made us. And that's why our lives respond to God, our creator. That's what she did. She responded to creator, her creator, the one who made him and her. There had to be a willingness to, to seek that. So you have to allow God to reveal those plans. And not just reveal them, but be willing to come near. Because that's why Moses said, you know what? I, I not only am trying to figure out what happened, I need to go. And then when he did go, he calls God's attention. And God says, ah, now, now I can speak to you. Now I can tell you what it is that you, you need to get from this. Now I can tell you how you can grow from this, not die from it. See, many of our life situations, the enemy intended that we die from it, that we die spiritually from it, that we die physically from it, that we die relationally from it. That's what he wants, that's his intent. Why, why is, why was, why, what is the intent of the devil? Straight up. To steal, kill, and destroy. See, we've all heard it at one point. His agenda hasn't changed. His strategy hasn't changed. 
The one who changes things is the one who created you. He makes the difference. He made the difference. If he can do it for me, he can do it for you. Understand that there are lives coming here week to week that are going through situations, and that's what they need to hear. If he can do it for one, he can do it for all. That's the truth about the gospel. It's so simple. Again, the song said, it's simple. It's simple. Why is it so simple? Because God never intended his relationship with us to be complicated. You have enough complicated things in your life. You have enough complicated relationships in your life. You know, the friend that gets jealous because you got a new purse. The friend that gets jealous because, oh, well, now you think you're driving that car, you're, you're all that now. You've got enough complicated, and they're still friends. Why? Because there's some compassion in you to say, you know what, they're not all that bad, you know, and they're not necessarily dragging me down, but the idea is, you know, they're just not, they just don't understand it the way I do. They don't understand that, that, that the goodness is a blessing it's not a curse. It's not to make someone feel bad, but it's to, it's to understand that God can do the same for me, for you. You get it? He can do the same he's done for me, for you, for the person out in your, in your community, in your neighborhood, in your family, in your workplace. He can do the same thing. So if we understand that he allows the circumstance to call our attention and he also anticipates us to take that initiative to go find out what's happening. And then he also, when we do that, he allows us or he reveals himself or his plans to us simply because we're willing. Not because we, we know all the answers or we have all the questions just yet, but because we're willing. Moses had no idea what he was walking into when he walked towards that bush. He didn't. Think about it. This is a burning bush. There's something speaking to me through a bush, and not only through a bush, but in the middle of a bush. It, that caught me by surprise because I said, let's see if this is just this translation that tells me it was the middle of the bush. I went from all the different, all the way down to King James. In the King James, it says in the midst of the bush which means the middle of the bush. Because in the middle of your circumstance, God is there. The enemy will tell you he's gone. He's way gone. He doesn't exist. Look at the fire around you. Look at all this stuff that's, that's happening. It's burning you up. It's, it's eating you up. And you say, no, God, you're there. You're there. See, the most, the, the most common mistake about sometimes callings and what God is calling us to do through a, a situation is that callings have, are, are, are limited to ministerial things or ministerial, professional ministerial occupations. And callings don't specifically only entail that. Yeah, there are callings that are ministerial, but there are, th th every one of us has a calling because the moment we accepted Jesus Christ, his calling was over our life. And so if we're Christians and we've, and we've accepted Jesus Christ, we've been called into the kingdom, and that means he can use anything we do for his glory. Anything we do. You want me to give you an example? There's, there, there's a gentleman here that, I mean, he's just, he's just jumped in. When I lost a, a, a kind of like a right hand helper that I had, you know, he's in heaven now, so he's doing a lot more better, a lot better than I. He stepped in and said, I can do that. I will do that. But the idea isn't what he's doing here, what I'm trying to emphasize, is that in his life, in his life, he's just, he's in the service industry. In other words, every job he's had, he's serving something. Not just customer service calls. I'm talking about literally serving. In the restaurant industry, if you mind you, 
It's important to know that what, what we use, what the calling God's given us even to use out there, he can use it in here. And I'm so glad that he does because he makes a difference. And sometimes we overlook and, uh, and, and everything else may get overshadowed, but it's those things that are being done in the background that make the most difference. And so when those things happen, we start to realize, you know what? It's not just about having reverend in front of my name. It's not about minister this or apostle this or bishop this or... Uh, One thing Pastor Rudy always taught us was this. Every, here at Freedom Life Center, every member is a minister. It's in our, it's in our, 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 our doctrine, if nothing else, locally, right? I'm not talking about greater doctrine. I'm talking about how it's written into our plan, our vision. Every member is a minister. So if you want me to call you minister on the way out, I'll call you minister. That's fine. If you're part of this house, you've been coming to this house, I'll call you minister. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't call me minister. Call me Gus. But I will honor you if that's what you would like. Because when we, when we understand that a calling is more than just a little title before our name or a designation or certification that we have, it's more than that. We recognize that our calling to serve is distinct. Distinct. John 15, 16 says, I chose you and appointed you. You did not choose me. I chose you and appointed you. It's distinct. It's like a fingerprint or DNA. Got some medical workers in the house right here. Can my DNA be your DNA? Can my fingerprint be your fingerprint? That's how unique and distinct God's calling is on your life. You say, oh, but man, there's 10, there, there's thousands of these, but there's only one you. God only created one you. That's how, that's how special. Do you, do you understand how special that is? That God would say, it's only you. That I'm only going to give you these fingertips that I'm gonna only give you what runs through your body. Think about it, it's that distinct. Your calling is, is no different. It's only for you. you also, we also need to recognize that the, our calling to serve is valuable. Ephesians 4.1 says, I therefore, a prisoner for the, for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. It's valuable. Don't, don't minimize it and say, but it's only taking out the trash or it's, 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 it's only going, uh, you know, going out there and, and, and fixing uh, uh, plumbing. If God's giving you that skill and he's giving you, it's part of your calling. It's part of who you are. It's part of the skills that most of us may not have. And in the house of God, when you use something like that, it's ministry. It's not, oh, he's a, you know, groundskeeper. More than the groundskeeper, you're a minister of God. What you do with what God has given you, with the talents that God has given you, with the giftings that God has given you, is a ministry. That's why it's valuable. That's why it says walk in a manner worthy of the calling. Walk in the manner. Everything you do, think about it. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it right. And even if I make a mistake, unknowingly to me, it's not a mistake. It's an opportunity for me to learn, but I, I'm not intentionally going out there saying, I'm just gonna do anything. Pfft. Yeah, clean the floors, you're crazy. You know, I'll sweep it under the rug. That's not it. He said, worthy of the calling, worthy of what God has, the gifting God has put in your life. Because if we realize that it's distinct, that it's valuable, it's also needed. Second Peter 1.10 says, work hard to prove that you really are among those God has called and chosen. Do these things and you will never fall away.
prove that you are really part of what God has called. But it's also that last part really got me because everyone is needed. In the house of God, outside of the house, everyone is needed. Everyone is valuable. Everyone is distinct. But the thing is, when you get connected, you realize that your calling can be a, a greater blessing. And it says at the end of that, do these things and you will never fall away. Why? Because when you connect yourself to the house of God, and I'm speaking specifically in the house of God here, when you use whatever God has given you even out there in here, when you connect to the house of God, you don't fall away that easily. That's why we insist. Connect to uh, one of the, the, the men's group, women's group, uh, youth group, um, you know, uh, young adults group. Um, connect to what's happening, the events, whether it's Easter, whether it's uh, our, our harvest time or, or, or Christmas time, whether it's, you know, VBS that's coming up. Connect. How can I help? You know, your presence can be a help. You know what you, God has blessed you with can be a help. These kids are not going to come here and expect just to uh, have water and, uh, and a couple of chips. They're coming here to learn about the Word of God, but there's, there's that moment where every one of us has some hunger. Every one of us wants to. So there's things you can do, things you can contribute and be part, because when you're connected, you're protected, said Pastor Rudy all the time. That has not changed. That has not changed. If you're connected to the house of God, you're protected. How are you protected? Because when you connect to what God is doing and what God has called you to do, then everything else falls in place. Everything else, you're, you, you are protected from all the things that can somehow drag you down. They're going to want to drag you down. Don't get me wrong. Problems will always, will always exist. But I'd rather be insured and protected when those times come. Just like your vehicle, just like your appliances. Wouldn't you rather have a warranty that, that is protecting you than to just say, well, when it happens, it happens. That's how we walk around when we're out of his will and out of his purpose. But God says, no, it's greater than that. I'm greater. It's greater because I'm greater. It's greater because God is greater. And he's called you to that. He's called you to that. See, one thing I can tell you for sure is that if you do not pursue your calling, if you don't pursue what God has called you to do, you'll spend the rest of your life wishing you were or wanting to be somebody else. Well, why can't I have what he has? Why can't I have what she has? Why can't I? Don't spend your life walking around that way. It's no way to live a life. It's no way to live a life. See, what we saw in that video could have been a decision to say, I ain't ever going to think about ever any, anything else. I'm not even, I, I don't need God. God, where were you when this was happening? Man, shh, whatever. Church, oh, much less. You don't have to walk around that way. When you know your calling, when you know what God has called you and what he's used to call you through, it makes a difference so that you know where to go, what to do when that time comes. Just like your warranty. You know that 800 number is there. You're going to call that 800 number because, first of all, I need to find out how much am I responsible for. I'm hoping it's not none of it. God says, I got this. Don't worry, I'm going to get you through this. Use this to grow. Use this to learn. Use this to move you into your next level. Don't worry. I got all everything that has to happen in the background. I have it. You just worry about that. You just be concerned about how am I growing through this? What is God showing me through this? How can I, how can I make myself move? Uh, 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 how can I become more excellent 
through this. Because God made us, every one of us, excellent. Every one of us is excellent. There's not one of us that doesn't have to take a closer look sometimes to realize what God has done in the midst of our situation. And sometimes we just need to take that step. Just like Moses, he didn't just say, oh, that's neat. I wonder what that's all about. That's Gus's version of what he was saying here. He said, no, I'm going to go towards it. He went towards it, got God's attention, and that's when it happened. Well, are you willing to take a closer look and realize that everything God, every single thing God has allowed you to go through was simply a method that he used to help you learn something, to help you grow from something, to help you understand how great he is. Because we are only the creation. He is the only creator. There is none other. None other by any other name. There is none. None other by which any man can be saved. Only Jesus, the Son of God. None other. None other. You may be sitting here wondering, you know, how do I get to that point? Well, I've always said the road here was never, was never straight. Meaning there were a lot of crooked paths that I had to go through, that you had to go through. But at one point or another, we get to that point where we say, God, straighten this out. I, I, I need you. Everything else has failed me. Everyone else has failed me. God, I need you. And you may be sitting here thinking that way, saying, how, how God, how can, I, how can I get to that point? How can it make a difference? How can I make a difference? How can what you put in my hands, the gifting you put in my hands, how can that make a difference in somebody else's life? Because we'll sit here sometimes week to week, year to year, wondering, wondering, God, when are you going to use me? I lead meetings at work. Why, why can't I go up there and hold that? If that's not your calling, that's not your calling. That may be your calling at work. You, you're a leader. By no, by you know, no, no, we're not, you know, diminishing or or, or 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 making anything light of that. But the idea is everyone has something. Because I was the first one to tell you that this is not where I want to be. I like being back there. I like, I like being the 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 shake, handshaker and the greeter. But when God speaks to you and He says you went to what you went through. Because I had something greater for you. There you go, Gus. Why? And someday that story, I don't think I'll be able to make a beautiful video like that about it. Or my, maybe my wife, I'll let her speak about it. But we went through what we went through because God had these moments. And when I see her, you know, sharing the word of God, it says, God, how did you bring us from there to here? Because the circumstance, the circumstance is what he allowed so that we could have that plan revealed and then take it to the next level and say, you know what? I'll do it. I'm here, God. I'll do it. If you're here and you say, I don't know Jesus Christ. I've heard or I knew I said a prayer things happen, I fell away. I'm going to invite you this morning. I'm going to invite you this morning. A 10 second prayer can change your life. A 10 second prayer can change your life. And if you repeat this prayer, you may hear others praying with you, but it's only because we support this moment in your life. Because this could be your burning bush moment. This could be the moment God starts to reveal every single reason you went through what you went through. You're going through what you're going through because he reveals it to you. And if you're here and you'd want to say, you know what? I need that Jesus in my life. I need God to take control of that. I'm going to ask everyone, just kind of bow your heads. We're going to give you even a sense of privacy if that's, if that's you. If you're watching online, I encourage you, take this moment. 
if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, He is the only way. He is the only answer. He is the only thing we need. Nothing changes from that. And I want to lead you in a 10-second prayer. Just say this with me. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins today. Come into my life. Today I declare you my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Simple as that. Simple. Simple. I don't need to pray a 30-minute prayer with you. I just need to let you know that there is repentance in the house of God. There is forgiveness in the house of God. And there is transformation and restoration in the house of God. And it doesn't matter what we've done or what we've been through or how we put ourselves even in that position. God says, it's okay. I love you anyway. No matter how, no, no, no matter if you cause the situation, I love you anyway. And so what you've just prayed has gotten you to the point to where God's, God says, because you accept my son Jesus Christ, all of that is gone away. Behold, you are new. You are a new creation, it says in the word of God. A new creation. Again, the word creation. Why? Because we are his creation. He is our creator. And everything we have and everything we need is de dependent upon the one who made us. Stand with me.